here we are at the BFI celebrating musicals. Now, a lot of people may think Hairspray is not a conventional musical. I think, however, it is a dance musical. Mm -hmm. We, there's loads of songs in it, right? They're all really catchy, right? And yeah. they're, all, they're all authentic yeah. to the period. period so yeah. all those silly songs, The Bug, all of them are actual songs mm -hmm. from 1962. The Roach? Yeah, The Roach, everything. <laughs> yeah, all of it was actual authentic music. So I wanted to, I thought it would be a great film to talk about at the BFI musical season <clears> because <throat> not only in a way is it its own film that celebrates dance and uh, along with many other things, but it has a kind of a legacy that came from the film, which is the Broadway West End musical. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. yeah. Just a few of you. Just a few of you. you know. So we've got some great, great members of that coming up in a bit. But I wanted to talk about the film first. Now, tell us about your first engagement with regards to the film. Did How did you hear about it? Had you heard of John Waters? No. My goodness. So, you know, I was 18 years old. I was a freshman in college. Yeah. And I was a musical theater major. Oh. And, um, yeah, I was studying. But I didn't get cast in one show. I'd been there the whole year and it was towards the end. It was finals week. And literally the woman who was my teacher, my, my mentor, she yeah. didn't, she didn't like fat people is what I, this is what I've come to, to believe. Right. And so she didn't cast me in one show. And so she even told me to give up that I was not talented, that I wouldn't make it as an actress. And then <clears> during <throat> finals week, I got the call. Someone, I don't remember who, but someone basically tipped me off and said, John Waters is looking for a fat girl who could dance. Weren't they putting posters up? It was on uh, back, it was in backstage and, and show business, all those like the yeah. trades. And I just went to the open call. It was a five hour drive from Ithaca, which is where I was in school. Yeah. Went to the audition, met John Waters, had never heard of him, had never heard of Divine. I was a pretty sheltered teen. And um, and he, you know, I was wearing a big Ithaca costume college sweatshirt and I had these massive tits and he was trying he was trying to suss out you know whether it was really me whether it was and I you know I, this was all me I was this mass it was a circle basically and um yeah and then it gave me a call back and you know again like I didn't process that this movie would make me famous would would change the entire trajectory and open every door for me you know I, I didn't think it through to me I was like oh my god I don't have to go back to that school <laughs> I can get paid for the summer and it was literally the summer of my life it was like camp you know um divine all those amazing actors I worked with I mean it was just a dream and then when it came out and it became this 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 successful film for John Waters and for divine but also to live on in all these different iterations it's mm -hmm. it's it's Thrilling. I mean, it's just to see, and to meet Leanne, who you know won the Olivier Award, and I mean, it's just to see it live on, and to and this this character of Tracy is such an iconic, Jeez. important role model for mm. so many people who feel like they're the underdog, who feel that they're not being represented and not being seen and heard, and and it's just it's 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 thrilling that I was able to create this role with John. So you hadn't heard of John and you got cast in the movie. Um, is it true that you were about to start working at The Gap? Well, no. They never even called... Do you have The Gap here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the they Gap. never even called me for an interview. Like, I've literally never... Other than babysitting when I was 12, I have never had an actual job, like a real <laughs> job. I've had just only in show business. So yeah. you got cast mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm doing this movie. Um, I'm going to be, like meeting all these people and you must have seen their like the char their, their characters totally and the the city of baltimore those of you who have yes. been there i mean the city is such a character and filled mm -hmm. with so many very unique people um the, the you know the, the actual sets you know they they look like sets but they're actually the streets of baltimore mm -hmm. that you see in the film and um yeah it just opened this whole new world for me so working with divine as your mother edna how how was your relationship when you first met well divine divine didn't want me to play tracy he wanted to play both parts so if you see if you've seen you know the other films he plays you know don davenport That's mother right, and daughter yeah. he's you know trouble. so he really wanted that for it for this role as well and john really wanted to go more mainstream with this film yes and so you know it was divine was definitely like icy with me in the beginning and then he warmed up and by the end he's like Ricky, let's share a pie. Let's eat a roast. You know, we became uh, pals with food. And, and um, it was so tragic because Divine died literally eight days after the movie opened. Yeah, he dropped dead really in his sleep. Uh, doing, he was doing an episode of Married with Children in California and didn't wake up. And um, he was 42 years old. I mean, to think, like, I'm 51 now, to think of how young that is. 
Um, and it's a huge loss because he Massive. was just he was just really about to like yeah, take explode. Off. I think it's really interesting because John's films definitely deal with um, a lot of social issues and Hairspray. Although having been one of the most successful ones and probably one of the most accessible ones, mm-hmm. I think is actually one of the most subversive mm-hmm. because it looks like something really easy and fun, but all the the, the messages underneath it are really quite something. Um, And still so timely today. I mean, just... Sadly so. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's tragic that that the themes of the the film and and what we were dealing with back in the 60s, I mean, look at where we are today, certainly in in the US. Oh, and here too. Yeah, Mm. it's... So, um, So you worked on Hairspray and the film came out... And then, like, this this It was career. literally like life imitating art for me. Because, yeah. you know, in the movie... Traces. And it's so weird to be seeing myself over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> but in the movie, you know, I become famous. You know, I become, like, the girl that wins the contest and gets the guy. And in real life, like, like I suddenly became famous. And John Waters really did... You know, I think I've managed to stay really particularly grounded and normal through this 30 plus year career because of, you know, his guidance and his mentoring. And he sat me down before the movie came out and said, I, I want to just tell you that your life is about to change. And I want you to remember these three things. I think I told you this. Mm. Always stay humble. Always stay true to yourself. And if you're going to read and believe the good things people write about you, you're going to have to read and believe the bad. And because then it was only like in print. There was no, there was <laughs> no, no Twitter yeah. and stuff. So, you know, it was just stuff that really resonated and stayed with me because you know all of it is like a dream you know and 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 30 years later to still be talking about this film and seeing the film out and it's being shown everywhere all the time still yeah it's it's I mean I pinch myself you know it's it was literally and you know and I think for for me I did my talk show I'm sure many of you grew up with me here and right yeah so for me you know I think part of why I think the show works so well is because I was that underdog from Hairspray. Yeah. I was that girl, that that overweight girl that wasn't too threatening, wasn't a know-it-all, was kind of someone who's trying to figure it out like everyone else. And I think um, that has stayed with me through my my career. You were the youngest syndicated talk show host in history, mm-hmm. right? I was 24. 24, and it was around the world. But yes, yeah. It was. I mean, I just someone I met in an elevator. She grew up watching me in Saudi Arabia. Like how, I mean, how weird. Um, yeah, no, it, it, and, and the fact that it resonated here in this country was always interesting to me because culturally there's there's a lot of differences. But I think you it's, all wanted to see how crazy and stupid the Americans were. You say, <laughs> you, say, you say that. And I think there was obviously an element of that. But also I think exactly what you said about you and your kind of that sense of your your relatability and the fact that everyone felt like they could they could relate to you. They understood mm-hmm. you. And, and you approached your audience as friends. Mm-hmm. And I think that everyone really likes that because we're quite nice, it's, you know, here. We're not, we're quite polite. And I think compared to, say, you know, Jerry Springer, yeah. you're, you were much nicer to He's people. He's actually a really nice guy. Yeah, I actually show. know him. But the show, yeah, the show. Yeah. And the show, his show wasn't real. No. Our show is really based in, in real stories, real people. I treated people with respect the way I would want to be treated. And I was curious. You know, we all are so curious about how human nature and mm. relationships, and, and that never waned. I did it for 11 years, and I never got sick of hearing, you know, why'd he cheat on her and that <laughs> baby daddy, hoochie mama. I mean, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, maybe I did get sick of it a little. <laughs> but, um, right. but I did it Emmy for a while. For it. It's yeah. fine. Like, you won an Emmy. Um, so you've done, aside from your TV show, and you still carried on acting. You did loads of really fun films, um, and you worked with John a few more times. Yes. Uh, tell you, you worked on a Serial Mom, mm-hmm. Cry I played Baby. Johnny Depp's sister in Cry Baby. Yeah. I lost my virginity on that movie. Um, to one of the actors, it wasn't Johnny. But <laughs> You're all <laughs> thinking that. I'll leave it at that. Um, and everyone on set knew about it. And um, I did Serial Mom, where I played Kathleen Turner's yeah. daughter. And I was in uh, Cecil B. Demented. I had a small yes. part in that. There was a bunch of movies I was supposed to play different parts, like the Maggie Gyllenhaal um, character in Pecker, I believe. Is oh called. yeah, it's yeah. Pecker. Yeah. I was supposed to. She, John wrote that part for me, but I wasn't available because of my shooting schedule. Right. Okay. So, but um, but it was. I mean, how lucky am I that John would always 
always think of me, that I became, I wasn't his original muse, but I was his second muse. Well, you still have a very beautiful friendship with John. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw him in London. We went out together a couple weeks ago. And no, it's, we're both very grateful for each other, you know, because mm. I think his career took a took a, a turn for the better after, you know, the making of Hairspray and certainly my <laughs> career took off. It's an, it was an, it's an amazing film. And obviously we're all here it enjoying it here today at the BFI. Um, so I, having spoken about that and we're talking about Hairspray here today, I thought it'd be great to maybe bring up some other special guests. Are you up for that? Yeah. All right. So please give a round of applause to Leanne Jones and Lizzie B. It's, this is really exciting. If you, if you don't know what's going on, um, obviously Ricky was uh, Tracy Turnblad in the original film, which you've just witnessed. Uh, Leanne Jones was the original Tracy Turnblad in the first West End production of Hairspray and won an Olivier Award. Yes. And uh, Lizzie is about to go to the ENO, right? Yeah. Yes, to do the new production. Um, both of you work with Michael Ball as Edna, mm -hmm. so that's all you're going to be. Uh -huh. And and this is the first time all three of you have met. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so it's a triple Tracy thing going on here. Yay. Now, um, I, I want to talk about how the film uh, it, it's it's kind of legacy as a musical because the musical. The film itself, the original film, deals with a lot of uh, issues with regards to racial tensions and and body image and things like that. And the musical also does it very well, I think, too. Mm -hmm. They really kept hold of those themes. Do you think that the themes are as strong in the show as, as they are in the musical? They tried to have some John Waters isms in the musical, definitely. Like, you know, um, in Good, Mon Good Morning Baltimore, the rats run across the stage. Mm -hmm. um, and they really wanted me to sort of look at them and reference them. And that's a John Waters. When yeah. you're snogging and all the rats are yeah. going over your feet. Um, <laughs> Except our, mine was a real rat. Yours is a fake rat. Oh, my show. God. That's <laughs> <laughs> gross. Um, um, have you have, have you guys, you, you've just seen the film for... That was my first time ever seeing the film. Aww. And it was so interesting because knowing the musical so well, I was then like, it was interesting to see what they've kept or what they've mm -hmm. slightly changed. And I, I think a, a lot of it's been Broadwayified mm -hmm. yes. for the yeah. for the stage show, but there are a lot of bits I was like, oh, that's the exact line that's in the show or something. There's so a lot of things that are yeah. lifted from yeah. the film, yeah. So I wondered if you felt that the, because um, what's been really interesting is I've read a lot about a lot of productions that have gone on. And also there was the movie as well, which mm -hmm. which was really great too. And also the live TV productions mm -hmm. of it. It just, as you say, keeps going and going and going. But there's been some productions that I've heard about that have had uh, all white casts or mm -hmm. um, female Edna's and, um, you know, what else? Uh, very thin tracies. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it's important because of the message it's giving in the film and, and, and about acceptance and about looking at what's within a person, do you think it's important to maintain that? Or do you think the story is about, as you say, an underdog and it doesn't matter what they look like or how do you, how, do you think that's important? I personally think it's really important. Yeah. I think... Personally, the having a thin Tracy thing is the thing that annoys me so much, but that's more from like a casting perspective that unfortunately still there aren't that many roles for bigger girls and I feel it kind of like takes away from something that's <coughs> that's there for people who look like me. Right. But, and and I think the the racial subject in the film is really important and yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I understand that a lot of places would want to stage this show because mm -hmm. it's incredible, but there's a lot of other incredible shows that you could do and mm. you wouldn't be taking away from the messages that are so important in it. Mm. I've seen a lot of local drama schools that, or like, you know, drama clubs that want to put it on. And actually, I'm really impressed that a lot of the leaders actually pull away from it because they say but well, we haven't got enough black kids mm -hmm. or, or it wouldn't be right to do it. And I do think that that is the right choice because it is so important. You can't have an all white hairspray. No. Mm. No. It doesn't make any sense. And <laughs> the music, Run and Tell That, like is such a sexy song. And like, we just, I don't know. I don't I... mean to say that white people are not sexy, but. <laughs> not sexy. I, just, I just think it's one of the very few musicals that has such a diverse cast. So that should be celebrated mm -hmm. rather than 
people trying to take away mm. from that. Mm. Do you do you think that um, the, it, it's it's really interesting that the film really set? It, it, no one had ever seen a romantic lead, a female romantic lead, who was bigger at that time when Hairspray was made. And it wasn't a joke. It you know? was yeah. not a joke. Right. No, and you were. It was really wonderful. It was just having that that role. Do you think? I mean, I haven't. It's it's. I had can't think of many films. 30 odd years on mm-hmm. that have really had that as a central no. theme um, and I don't obviously want to focus on like weight and stuff like that but it, it, it feels very much that um, even though we've moved on we understand about uh, body image and celebrating diversity that we still haven't in mainstream films had enough films or, or that's, that accept mm-hmm. that and we've had a few like films that like Shallow Hell mm-hmm. or um, yeah, but Shallow Hell is so. Is, I mean, this is offensive. Yeah. That's what I mean. So, like Muriel's uh, Muriel's wedding. wedding. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like this this movie in some ways paved the way, I, and I think That's it has what, changed yeah. um, and gotten better. It has gotten better. You look at like the shows, in, certainly in the U.S. And I'm blanking on them, but there are shows now that have like bigger women. Mm. And, you know, more normal women are represented. Yeah. I think as as leads these days. Yeah, because everyone is normal. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I love when I got the script was that. Tracy got the guy because mm. I just felt like all at drama school and I even felt that in my own high school like I would get a guy but he was never like the most handsome or popular guy at school I know that sounds really shallow but um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just so chuffed that she gets this, the hottest guy and like and it's not even questioned it's true mm. so Hairspray the movie was a huge success it really was it, 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 it blew it, up I mean it made two. Uh, it was cost them two point seven million. Yeah. So it wasn't like a blockbuster. It was a critical hit. Um, but afterwards, VHS. And, yeah, and, and, it did. Uh, it did really well. It certainly was probably John's most successful film mm-hmm. to date. Um, and certainly, you know, the the musical. I mean, what has happened since has made it that much more successful. So then the musical happened on Broadway, and it was a huge success. It won all the Tonys. Yeah, and I, then... I joke that Marissa Jarrett Winokur won my Tony <laughs> because you studied <laughs> because musical theater. Really, well, and I wasn't going to be good enough. I was. I certainly didn't sing as well as she did. But but I wanted the chance. I remember yeah. saying to John like they were doing the the show, and I said. Please, Please, can I audition? He's like, you're t- you're not fat and you're too old. <laughs> and I was like, oh. He said that lovingly, though, right? <laughs> he did always. <laughs> so Nothing would keep it real. But no, I you know, I, of course, I've come to love everyone that plays the role of Tracy. <laughs> but so, it was hard to swallow back then. I can imagine. You know? But you did get to be in the movie. I did. Yeah. Yes. I, every time they've always kind of given me a shout out, which is really lovely. Absolutely. But um. But yeah. No. It was. It was. It was thrilling. But it, I remember going to see it on Broadway opening night and just. It was like, you know, bittersweet, you know? Mm. Well, hopefully we'll all be together to their, at the, your wanna, opening yeah, night, Lizzie, opening to celebrate you. February is? April. 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 Yeah. Maybe I'll try to come back for yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, as I said, it won all the Tonys on Broadway and it was coming to London. And, I mean, there must have been a huge, I mean, it was the hot show that was mm-hmm. opening up in London, Because it, it was coming, like, a, the year before. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, <laughs> I got the whole thing from going to an open audition as well. Really? Did you? Yeah, I was, still at, I was still at drama school, so I was, wasn't was actually allowed to go to the audition. Um, but my head of department or head of musical theatre was like, don't tell anyone, but I will let you go. I, th- I think because he realised how perfect it was for yeah. me. Wow. Um, and had you seen it? Had you seen the show? No, I... Uh, Oh, it's really bad. All my friends were like, get to the library now. So I went to the library, like Googled it, and I saw your picture, the movie. I hadn't even seen the movie. Um, and when I saw the photos, I was like, that's me. And then I heard the songs. I was like, this is me. It was really weird. It was like it all sort of... Wow. Lined up. And that was your first big role. And yeah, then... my first paid job. And then and then suddenly you win an Olivier. <laughs> yes, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about that bit, actually, because I... Yeah, I don't know. I was just in this like whirlwind that was happening to me, and then it got closer to the time of the Olivier's, and then people started to talk about them, and I was like, "What?" And then <laughs> realized, "Oh, like that might happen." And it was. It sounds so quite weird. sounds similar to the. It, sto- I was just yeah. thinking it yeah. sounds so similar because yeah. I, you know, you're on this like ride, and it kind of feel it's like it's like your life, but it feels fake. You know, it feels like a dream, and. Um, yeah, and you just yeah, you're, and you're in it. You're in it, and it's just like, whoa, what is happening? And you're about to and Liz is about that. to go on it. You've just come Sorry. off of Kinky Boots. I have. I know. Yeah. So tell us about your journey to hairspray. Um, so I know Jerry Mitchell, who's mm-hmm. the 
uh, choreographer of, of Hairspray um, really well. I, I did my first ever job with Jerry, which was a workshop of a new musical called Becoming Nancy. Right. Um, but I got that kind of on a fluke. I'd literally just finished normal university doing a history degree and got the got oh the my audition, wow. my first ever audition and went and got it and then have worked on that for like four and a half years now. Wow. And we've just done the stage production, first ever production of that. In, um, in, a, in the States. In the States, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've known Jerry since then and and did Kinky Boots and so I think sort of like January this year, it got announced that Hairspray was happening and I was like, oh, I'd like to think I'd have, <laughs> I'd have a chance seeing as I know Jerry, but um, went through the entire process. process. It was never like a, yeah, you'll just be doing what was it. That like? it was, what was it? It was amazing. Like I was, I was really interested to see who else would be up for it because um, I mean, I'm, 25 so I'm not old but I, I thought oh they normally try and find you know someone Teenager. absolutely fresh to to do it and so one of the girls was 19 and then we sort of like went up in age mm. wow. from then but it was incredible doing those final rounds of those girls we were all so different we sounded different we looked That's different great. and it was genuinely one of those auditions when I walked out and I was like I am going to be so thrilled for whoever wow. gets to do it because what a role. And I think for anyone who looks like I do, it's the dream role. It just is. And mm. I think if you are a bigger girl who does musical theatre, it's the role that everyone goes, oh, one day you'll play Tracy Turnblad. <laughs> it just is that part. So, yeah, it, it feels crazy that I'm about to do it, but I'm so mm. excited. The Thorny <laughs> Park scene where she says, that girl's got roaches in her hair. Well, they actually threw like these giant oh. water bugs on me and Brooke you know do you know Brooke Yaton so Pat Moran's right. son yes, 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 so yes, Pat yes, Moran yes. is John Waters' best friend and she casts and all the films she casts all of John's films and produces films some of and, them yeah. and so Brooke is her son and he's the prop master so he does all the so he oh, had to wrangle mm -hmm. ah. and he's he's a really successful prop uh, prop master anyway so he had to wrangle these and they were in a jar and I remember like I, I you know <laughs> and I you know the things I had to like just succumb and just surrender to and so they and, the, and then they didn't even show it in the film he cut it <laughs> out of the film <laughs> which was infuriating but yeah no he did actually throw the roaches on me awesome. we did oh. it more than once I believe too welcome to the world of John thank Waters. you for bringing me back to that <laughs> yeah. it was worth it oh what did she say at the end she wants to go to study something oh that's really bad what does she want to study at the end she goes to, she wants to go to college and study uh, ethics or something oh, Oh, um, yes. Hopefully she, her and Link get married and have babies and she does her degree. You know, John yeah. wrote a sequel that he was trying to sell. He had, it was well, in yes, it they, was the HBO. Yeah. They optioned it, but it never it actually happened. eventually got made. But I was very, and I never read it, so I don't know what did happen to her. <laughs> we'll try and find out. Maybe Ricky, you can ask him sometime. Yeah. I've got, I would love to, you know, I don't work anymore as an actress very much. I mean, I, I just, I just, you're so sweet. I don't really, I'm not as good an actress as I am at being real and being myself, you know? So, um, and I don't want to host a show anymore. So I don't know, but, um, you know. So that was I, one of I, my questions. Is is the Ricky Lake show ever going to come back? No, no, it won't come back. Aww. I don't think so. That's I mean, okay. I have to do a short stint somewhere, but nothing. You're making like amazing, amazing documentaries. I make documentaries, documentaries you guys. You've got to That's check what them I do out. now. Yeah. So I, I turned to behind the cameras about 12 years ago. I made a movie called The Business of Being Born. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can see it on like iTunes right now. But it's a documentary about birth, the medical system when it comes to birth, primarily in the U.S. But it does resonate in, in the countries like first world countries like the U.K. Um, and, I it, you know, it stems from my own experience. It was all my own money. I spent three and a half years making it. And that, you know, Hairspray is certainly my favorite of any of the films I've made but, uh, acting wise. But my documentary is the best thing I think I'll, I'll do in my lifetime. Oh, yeah. So cool. You check them out. Ricky's yes. documentaries um, are brilliant. So I don't know what John, John is not making films as of now. He's writing and he does public speaking. He does visual art. I mean, he's, he's one of the most extraordinary people. I mean, the most extraordinary um, artist I've ever known. And, um, and he's so true to himself. What I love is like, he's a true auteur. You know, there's no one like him. Mm. Um, I've known him now, obviously 32 yeah. years and, um, he, it's a gift. It's a gift to, to call him my friend. What's apart from Hairspray, do you have a favorite John Waters film? Oh my gosh. I mean, all it's of hard. them, all of them. I, I mean, 
Female Trouble is yes. such a brilliant film. Yeah. And Divine is, I love that, that, that role of Divine in that film. Um, I also love, I think Serial Mom is, a, is, a, is an amazing, genius film. And Cry Baby, people love them for different reasons. But, See, um, Cry Baby was also made into a musical, but yeah. didn't have the same impact as um, Hairspray. That's the only reason I know it. I, I'm terrible. I don't really know what many of I've his... I've seen all of them. <laughs> yeah, my homework and I've lived them I've lived you have you've been through I mean living in a in an apartment with Johnny Depp for three well, months we in a hotel we all yeah. lived in a very small hotel and we shot nights that whole film was shot at night and so you know Patty Hearst and, and Iggy Pop and I mean it was just these are characters man. aren't they yeah can you imagine filming a film, a film with all these characters I mean, my family is pretty used to it right now. I've been around a really long time. I mean, I have two sons. My sons are 22 and 18. I brought my youngest son, actually, last year we screened the film for the Academy uh, of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences in the States. So what the, the Oscars, basically the yeah. screening hall where they screen all the Oscars. And John came and all the, a lot of the cast came. And it was one of those surreal moments. My son was 17 at the time. I was 18 when I made the movie. So he's m almost my age when I made the film, watching with, with him at the Academy. I think it's weird for them and I think it's normal. It's what they know. But when but when you first got the role and, and oh, all my of parents. a sudden. Oh, then. Yeah, I, my mother, who I have a very strange relationship with and did back then, I don't think she knew what to do with me because my mother was someone who you know, hated, or, 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 was body, like, obsessed, was really ashamed that she had a fat daughter, oh. you know, as, as she was, I mean, she was. And <clears throat> so then when I suddenly became rich and famous for being fat, <laughs> she literally didn't know what to do for, with me. So, uh, yeah, but, um, but they, you know, I, I think they're proud of me. I mean, I think I'm really proud of, like, that I've managed to not only, you know, do this film, but also have a career beyond this film. And, um, yeah. Yeah, what about you guys? Oh, well, I can't explain the feeling of when I got the phone call to say that I'd got the part. Um, I was working, it's in some like interviews that I've done in the past and stuff, but I was working for the Halifax. And at the time, the Halifax made this big thing out of it, like from Halifax to hairspray, every, every <laughs> single thing said that. Um, but yeah, I was working on a mortgage helpline and I was listening no. to people whinging at me all day long, like this hasn't happened in time. No. And um, I, I knew I was auditioning. And I got the call like in my lunch break and like I was a wreck. And at the time they said that it was going to be Matt Lucas playing my mum, obviously. Really? Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh. That would be very different. I never should yeah. say that. Maybe that should be off record. But anyway. um, <laughs> oh, it was years ago now, though. Yeah, don't worry. he probably would He might do it now, you know, if, if Michael doesn't mm, stick around. Or a good Wilbur, wouldn't he? Be good Wilbur. Mm. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then I phoned my dad, and my dad was like crazy. Like we were sob like sobbing to each other. I was shaking. I was sick. <laughs> um, and then I just want to say like also when I was at the Olivier's I was sitting at the table with my dad and he um, I didn't even hear them say like when they opened the envelope I didn't even hear them say Leanne because he lifted my hand <laughs> and stood up like I'd won a boxing match he was like <laughs> and I was like whoa, whoa, what are you doing to me it was crazy my dad is like super proud and like quite crazy but yeah it was amazing amazing and Lizzie this is all new for you yeah it is new I just think like Genuinely, it's my my absolute dream role, and I think that's the part of it that's so exciting for me. Um, I I sort of didn't think hairspray was ever gonna come back, or I like worried, like I said, that I was gonna be a bit too old to do it. But yeah, I'm just so excited. Like, I think my parents are just my mum's here. Hi, they're, mom. just, <laughs> they're just happy that I'm succeeding at what I love doing, mm. and I think. You know, I took a massive risk, like leaving my history degree behind, but I think it's paid off. I, I told this, I told this story <laughs> from today. history to hairspray. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mum won't mind me telling it because she's a legend. But when I got the phone call, she literally ran into the living room and we popped open some champagne. And I was on the phone to my agent. I was literally screaming. Mm. And then my mum was just like, "I'm really sorry. I've got to change my pajama bottoms because I've just wet myself." <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so the best that, reaction ever. That is basically. probably the most That's John hilarious. Waters yeah. kind of yeah. response we can expect. So on, on that, that note, note <laughs> I would like for you all to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to Lizzie B, Leanne Jones, and of course Ricky Lay. Yeah.